So Twitter is on fire thanks to Lawrence Fox who recently posted this image on his Twitter page. This was in response to what Sadiq Khan posted which was his promotion of the Black on the Square event taking place in September. Now Sadiq, I have no idea why you wasn't informed that Black History Month takes place in October which is only a month away. So wouldn't that have been a little bit more fitting to actually schedule the Black on the Square event in October, not September? But what do I know, hey? What do I know? But back to Lawrence Fox. And of course, as expected, this got a lot of noise and outrage. And I'm just here to say, people, please don't take the bait because that's exactly what he wants. Look, if you don't know, but I'm going to tell you, Lawrence Fox is the epitome of a spoiled rich kid who doesn't like it when he doesn't get his own way and when the spotlight isn't on him. He comes from a very privileged background. He is part of the, people say he might be 10%, I say he's part of the 1%. You look at his family, his background, where he came from, um, what schools that he was able to be enrolled in, all this kind of stuff. And the fact that he's an actor, listen, (laughs) bit of a side note about actors, okay? Especially in this country. Most actors are extremely wealthy. The the arts is an extremely elitist um, venture, don't get it confused about how people see our entertainment. Most of it comes, especially historically, if you look at the history, the arts, people who when they go to university and they studied all these, what we call nowadays, um, these BS degrees, you know, these gender studies, these theology, these philosophy, this is what university was for. It was not for these STEM subjects. That was what the plebs had to take. The actual Bachelor of Arts in terms of philosophy, um, um, theology, all this kind of artsy kind of stuff, that was really for the esteemed class. So I need to do a video on that, but that is exactly what privileged people did. Why? Because they didn't need to rely on getting the job. They had their contacts. They had people who they knew how to get in and what they needed to do. They already had their life planned for them. Them going to university was just a tick on the box there that they've been to university. I'm of this esteemed class and here it is. And that's exactly what Lawrence Fox is. Make no bones about it. He had his life planned out for him. He came from an acting background, a typical narcissist, typical sport rich kid. And here we are right now, even though he pretty much has had (laughs) a non-existent acting career. Because let's be honest, I don't know about you. Me personally, I have zero, zero recollection of anything that he has done. I looked at his filmography, looked at his Wikipedia article. He's done a few TV shows here or there, some theatre plays. Don't know. I don't recall him in any of these. I haven't watched anything. And that's all he's done. But yet, what do people remember him for? How has he kept himself relevant? People remember him for not his acting ability, but it's more known due to who he's dated in the acting, I say entertainment world, Billy Piper. And that's about it. And he knows it. And of course, the fact that he's got a last name, Fox, based on the Fox family. But that's all he's known for. Nothing him himself that has separated him out, except for of recent times in which he's kept himself massively relevant by spouting out all this stuff in which he's trying to be a, I don't know, an activist for, for, you know, the regular people, which is a load of nonsense because believe it or not, these kind of tirades can only be reserved for the rich. This is my take on it. There's no way near normal people who have jobs can be having these arguments the way that he does. I'm, 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 I'm convinced. I'm convinced that these types of assignments are only for the wealthy elites and it's only reserved for the wealthy elites in terms of who he cares for. I do not believe for one second that the average plumber, electrician, the average person who's working at a job, nine to five, has all this time that he does to be doing what he does to keep himself relevant or to fight the power that is woke culture. But I could be wrong. <laughs> but this is only going to be another case study which people have taken the bait left, right and centre in that he'll probably use to discuss with his right wing, also privileged people on GB News because, <laughs> again... A lot of people on that come from very wealthy backgrounds again, but they're all going to cry victim, all going to cry victim, which I find so hilarious, so funny that whenever a lot of these people who, you know, always crying about all oh, these left wingers always crying victim, but yet when they do something which they know, they know will cause outrage, they know they're going to get backlash, they themselves are now crying victim. They themselves want to come in and say, oh, this is meant to be about freedom of speech. Yeah, sure it is. You just want your freedom to offend people, not to have a dialogue, but that's what you try and pitch it as. And, you know, all these, you know, stupid fans and stupid cult members will just believe it left, right and centre. I mean, I've seen it with, this year's been funny, but just pearly things when she says anything stupid and she gets called out on it, she acts, cries, victim. Oh, oh, you take me out of context. No, we've repaid exactly what you said in the exact manner of what you said. We've even asked you what you meant. 
and yet you're still saying the same thing and you're still trying to make it out as if we're trying to, you know, re reinvent the wheel. No. Andrew Tate, exact same thing. We play exactly what you said. You take me out of context. I'm like, hold on a second. You offered this information out. No one forced you to it. You offered this information out. No one, <laughs> this wasn't something which we had to coax out of you. You went on the hills. You went on every podcast you can do to extol what you thought was the truth or what you believed to be the truth. Same with Lawrence Fox. All the same way. They all love to get a rise out of people. They all love to say something controversial. They all love to have the spotlight on them. And then when they backlash, when they experience backlash, now they want to start crying victim. Take me out of context. You're supposed to be on my side. You complain. They start complaining. And then they want to say, oh, the left complain. The left do this. The left the victims. The left the victims. I just find it hilarious to watch. But when I saw this, when I saw what he tweeted, I, I immediately rolled my eyes. I wasn't even thinking of racism. I wasn't thinking about blackface. I just, I, I was so over that nonsense a long time ago anyway regarding blackface. I don't get it still to this day. I would love to get it. I still don't get it. But even still, I was like, whatever. And I was like, please, people, don't take the bait because we know what he wants. He wants the reaction. He thrives off the reaction. He's the only way he can keep himself relevant. It's the only way to pay his bills. And there it is. He got a reaction. And I'm like, please don't fall for it. Please don't fall for the bait. But it is what it is. Let me know your thoughts on this. Until next time.